how do you play games when you're in forced social separation due to the pandemic? I'm going to be talking about all the different ways you can play. Now, this doesn't just apply to when you're forced inside for 30 days at a time, like we are now. This also applies when friends move away, or you move away, or you're sick, or they're sick, you know, all these different things. So this should be applicable for pretty much forever. But right now, it is, I don't know, a couple days into the forced 30 days uh, pandemic isolation here in Nevada. So that's why I'm sharing. All right. So the first game you can go into is super old school Dungeons and Dragons. This works as well online or maybe even better. So how do you do it? My preference is something like Discord. I don't really like anything else. I like just using Discord. I think that it's easy. It's straightforward. Here you can see my channel. Feel free to, to join if you want. Um, I am going to be chatting a lot more because I'm stuck inside. So it's just going to you know kind of be inevitable. What I like about playing role playing games that are meant for the table online is that you can have sound effects easier. You can have uh, graphics that you don't have to print or anything. I've spent so much money over the years printing out props to hand out to people physical like emblems and things. But when you're remote, you can just give it to them and they can look at it and it's free. Works really well. There's a couple other products out there that you can pay for. But again, I just like Discord. I think it's easy enough. I'm good with it. All right. So let's say that you don't either you don't like tabletop role playing games or it's just not something you really want to do. You really want the experience of playing something uh, like, well, basically any of the board games behind me. If that's what you're looking for, what what I actually first experienced, I think last month with uh, Sandy Peterson was Tabletopia. Wow, this is a really cool experience. It, if you're familiar with like Photoshop and things like that, all the commands are the same. It's easy to like nav navigate around. It's easy to, to like pick up things. Boom. It's got super easy controls. Honestly, I really prefer the controls of this app over other options like Tabletop Simulator, which I'll talk about in a moment. It's super nice. I like it. One thing I don't like so much is the pricing uh, model. Some games are free. It's great. Glorantha is free, so that's cool. You can play that. But if you want to play other games like Tapestry, the games you know have a cost. So like, boom, four ninety nine a month for silver, uh, nine ninety nine a month for gold. It's very reasonable, guys. This is totally fair, in my opinion. It's very very fair. It costs money to hold host this stuff. I get it. I understand it, but. Also, this money's gone. This is much more similar to going to a board game cafe. And I will tell you guys, I love board games. I am not a super huge fan of a board game cafe. I'm just not very comfortable paying just for the ability to play as opposed to paying to own it. That's just me. So that's up to you um, whether this works for you or not. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more pay at one time, well, then you have stuff like Tabletop Simulator. Now, I never really liked Tabletop Simulator too much, to be honest, because if we go in and we say, OK, boom, create. Let's go ahead, create Cthulhu Wars. It's OK. Um, you'll notice that all of these sandbox things they um, they kind of work a little bit similarly in that they're very clunky, <laughs> just honestly. So let's see here. So it took me the longest time, guys, to figure out that these are the maps. And so if I want to place this map, I just click place. Boom. Now I've got a map. Oh, sorry. I don't mind. I'm making myself nauseous, guys. Sorry about that. All right. So. Here's the map. There you go. You can kind of like drag these out. Um, boom. 
but it, it, it's just awkward. It's clunky. And here's another thing, guys. These are not games. Not uh, at least they're not video games. These are sandboxes that allow you to manipulate a three dimensional representation of a board game. You have to know the rules. This is not a board game in a digital game format. It doesn't know about turns, rounds, and it's so confusing to new people. If your gamers are at all anxious about technology, I do not recommend this at all, at all. It, it's going to stress them out. And 30 minutes in, somebody's going to lose their piece. It's going to like slide off into space. And yeah, they're not going to know what to do. I think eventually it, whoop, off into space. It will eventually pop up here, but they might not notice it. I don't know. It gets weird, guys. It just gets weird, especially with cards. I don't know. Um, these See these cards, right? I think we can flip them. I don't know. It just gets really weird. And oh, sorry, guys. Uh, it gets really weird. So you can like throw things off. Whoop. Off in space. It's, it's kind of neat. I do, I do like this as a special button. They give you a whole button for it. Flip. I don't know why. Um, but the button exists and there you go. You can do it. Um, yeah, it's, it's okay. I know some people love, love, love tabletop simulator because you buy it once and you just own it and then it's free. You can download things. Of course you can buy, um, premium versions of games. I recommend it because those typically play better, but let's move on. So. If you want an actual mm, board game that plays like a video game, meaning that you don't need to know the rules, you can't cheat, Sentinels of the Multiverse, this plays better than the card game. It really does, guys. This game is so frustrating at the table. It just people forget things, it's confusing. You either lose or you win. And it's because somebody cheated either for or against yourselves. It's really hard. This makes it easy. It's great. I love this game and you can play this solo. It's beautiful. This game is wonderful in the video game format. It's very frustrating at the table. I have bought so many, so many packs on this just to play by myself even. Though we do also do play with other friends. It's great. All right. Uh, Small, World, Small World 2. This is another game that um, I've played it at the table in, with physical format, but actually I prefer to put this on an iPad Pro, hand it around to people, and people can just play or give them the access to the um, board game TV and toss around a wireless mouse. It plays great. You can play it remote, you can play it in person. This is a beautifully well done game that makes it so that you can focus on having fun and you don't need to worry about like learning the rules. Also, you don't have to worry about setup because all these things are, um, I don't know, they're not that difficult, but they're a little bit of a hassle. So yeah, it's super nice and easy. Now, uh, games that, you know, Scythe is another game. It, this is literally a recreation of the board game. You can play Scythe in tabletop um, simulator or you can play Scythe here. I recommend Scythe Digital Edition. It's amazing and you get more and it's just totally worth it. Okay. But then there's also other games that are board games that have never existed in physical form. Armello is one of those. Is it, is it Armello or Armelia or Armillo? Is it an AA? I don't know. But this game is a game that I think they originally started to design for the like tabletop but then they just decided what they wanted to do could only work in digital format and it is amazing i really like the designs i like the three-dimensional nature of it i like the way that you unlock it's almost like legacy like each time you play it you unlock more little things um see he's like uh scarcaster i think i think i um i think i unlocked that I don't know, there's little things you, you unlock. But uh, boom, it, it's, just, it's just a beautiful game. It's fun. You can play it multiplayer, you can play it solo. 
and it's cute, but what the best part about it is it actually is more fun for being a digital game than it would be if it was just a, a physical game. So there's story to it. It honestly is super, um, super neat. I really like it. It's, you know, you can see the graphics. It's beautiful. I don't know why it's so small. I think it's defaulting to some sort of weird resolution, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, that's, that's kind of, I mean, ultimately, you can play with Discord with nothing. You can play with Tabletopia if you can install software, but Steam is where it's at if you're a remote board game player. Just really, in my opinion. And with that, I'm probably just going to end this here. Uh, comment down below how you're handling the social isolation. And to really just cap off the episode, I'm going to kind of look at the comments and just give some, some feedback. This is actually why I set this up. Before I was stuck inside for the next 30 days, I uh, set this up because I thought, hey, I'm going to end every video reading people's comments and be one of those guys. Because... Why? Because I feel like it's big. Like we hit uh, 2,400 subscribers. I'm so excited. I'm going to give the next big um, like contest thing out at 2,500 subscribers. That means that by the time this whole pandemic blows over, then we'll be giving out a, another couple board games. So that'd be super cool. All right. Brandon Vos. Great, uh, great video. I just started playing this. Uh, yesterday oh okay only yesterday that's fair so he's basically saying that the game uh, how to uh, journeys in middle earth is super challenging it is it really is it's one of the toughest games we played we lost twice and then we won all but one after that so you can do it just pay attention to the map you can do it donchevic okay he disagrees about having time to build up your character in second edition Arkham Horror. Okay, here's the thing about Arkham Horror, guys. Um, if you play it enough, you will get good and it will become easy. Trust me. You have to have you have to be team players, you have to let people focus, and you have to really not do what's best for you and do what is instead best for the table. And it will become easy and it's not gonna be so annoying. Um, I really love Second Edition. It's honestly one of the best versions of Arkham Horror that I've played. All right, Joshua Snell, damn, this is a slow monologue. Yeah, probably right. I, that's me, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not arguing with you. I agree. I'm trying to get better. Retro Zombie, take a shot every time he says money. Okay, it is St. Patty's Day. So money, money, money. one log three is that three shots i don't know guys um yeah i i tend to repeat myself a lot thanks for calling me out on that joshua snell and hope everyone had a happy saint patty's day even if they're stuck at home alone um well cat's here with me so i'm not alone but if you guys at home alone i don't know drink an extra shot because i'll just save money all the, all the time all right um wd caster where to get cthulhu wars i know it's the hard thing with Peterson Games. You have to get in on the Kickstarters. So sign up for the newsletter and back the next Kickstarter. That's the only reasonable place to buy Peterson Games stuff reliably. Sorry about that. Uh, Philip Boardman definitely would not want to play a board game with Ramsey. Sorry. Um, that's legit. He's my special friend and uh, it can be frustrating. Uh, sorry about that. Sandy of Cthulhu, Sandy Peterson. Uh, he gives some extra ways to be brutal with Nodens. So he gives us some different ways. Definitely read up on that in the in my video, how to play with Nodens in Cthulhu Wars. But I actually have one question. Submerge Nodens. So if you enable Nodens to copy the uh, spell book for Cthulhu that gives Submerge, and uh, Nodens submerges does he submerge somewhere else can he take an army and submerge and then can cthulhu take an army and submerge and now you have two armies 
that can show up together or separate. That seems like a brutal combination for Cthulhu. Um, I I want to know. I, I assume that's how it works. But alternatively, they could end up submerging together into one place and then um, emerging in the same place. I don't know. All right, Arthur Daffos, and we'll end with this. To me, the brutal combo is Berserker Gang. So you would technically have five Nupcase and so replenish them for even cheaper. That that would be a pretty brutal combination. Um, I can't wait to eventually play Cthulhu Wars with Arthur. He's been a longtime fan. I really appreciate Arthur. I will probably lose in that game. I'm just calling it out right now because typically I play these games in like teacher mode. So I'm telling people, hey, just so you know, you could do that to, to do this better. Or, hey, I'm about to do this. And it's only when I'm kind of grumpy that I end up um, kind of getting more quiet and actually trying to win. So uh, I'd be super excited to play with Arthur and consequentially he would probably just be brutal because he, he comes up with great combos. He's, he sent me a bunch over the years. All right. With that, that was my how to, um, how to play board games remotely, which is particularly applicable when you're stuck inside social isolation. Be kind to your neighbors, be kind to old people, uh, the vulnerable in our population. And we only have to get through, you know, just a short period, three weeks, four weeks, whatever. And uh, we'll make it through and we'll play more board games. So, all right. Bye, guys.